What's up guys, it's Brian again from Lake Hickory Scuba Marine. I got Mr. Steve Nash here, he's one of our local divers. He does a lot of local diving in one of the quarries. And Steve sent me an email here a couple days ago asking if I could shoot a video on catastrophic failures or free flows underwater. But I'm gonna take it one step further. We're actually gonna do several catastrophic failures tonight in the pool. But before we do that, I'm gonna let Steve tell the story of exactly what happened so we know what depth he was at, how quickly this failure occurred, and how quickly he actually ran out of gas at depth. So Steve, appreciate you being along. Thank you Definitely so much. appreciate you being a subscriber with us. If you will, tell our audience just a little bit about what happened to you, and that way we kind of know how to set this scenario up, see if we can simulate exactly what happened, mm -hmm. and try to learn why it happened that way. Okay. Um, we were about uh, 10, 15 minutes into the dive at about 50 feet. Um, I normally do a couple of regulator switches throughout the dive, and I went from my primary to my necklace backup. Yep. Um, swam around for a few minutes, switched back. When I pulled a secondary out, it started to free flow. Right. So I did what I knew, I thought I knew, to, to stop the free flow. Right. Stick my thumb in there, trying to breathe. Trying to give it. it back pressure, right? Exactly. Um, and nothing worked. Right. Um, I spent probably about 30, 45 seconds trying to fight that thing and uh, I noticed breathing resistance. Mm -hmm. So I immediately went to my SPG and I was close to about 100 pounds. All right. I carry a bailout, uh, so I immediately went to the bailout. Good thing you had it. Definitely, Definitely. glad I had it. Yeah. Um, got myself relaxed and uh, a few seconds later, the SPG on my main back gas was at zero. No kidding. So I notified my buddies, got them all gathered up and then uh, we ascended safely to the safety stop and surfaced. Awesome. Well, I'm definitely glad you made it back. That's definitely a scary story by all means. Um, and guys, you know, free flows can be caused from anything from a regulator freezing up. You can have debris in one of your um, diaphragms that could cause a free flow as well. Maybe your demand lever gets stuck. Anything like that can cause a free flow. But what we want to do tonight is we're going to simulate a free flow at the extreme. We're actually going to jump in the pool and I've got three tanks set up. One's going to, we're going to actually cut a high pressure hose as if you maybe had a gauge explode or maybe the swivel or the spool inside the gauge exploded. We're also going to cut a low pressure hose. Now we can sit there and just hold the purge to simulate that free flow, but we want to take it to the extreme. We want to see exactly what happens when a low pressure hose explodes and how long it takes to drain. And then we're also going to simulate a high pressure free flow as in your actual o-ring of your tank valve blows out or it malfunctions underwater to where you you're actually having to shut down your valve underwater. So we're gonna time all three, we're gonna film it for you, see how long it takes. And then when I get done editing this video, I'm gonna do the math for you. We're gonna to try to simulate everything that happened to him at 50 feet here tonight. And we're only dealing with a 10 foot pool, but we can do the math and see if it's consistent that what actually happened. And then I'm also gonna show you why it happens, why one bleeds off quicker than the other, and why he went through his air so quickly. So let's jump in the pool, and then I'll give you some final thoughts when we get done.
All right, guys, so we just got back to the classroom. We got all the numbers ran here, and they are very, very shocking. I want to do a quick recap of exactly what we did, how we tested this, how we calculated it down, and I also want to show you the primary reason these numbers are what they are. So first of all, we had three cylinders that we tested, all at a depth of 10 feet or 1.3 atmospheres. That works down to 3.04 meters for the metric crowd out there. And of course, what we did was simulate a catastrophic failure in different systems. We tested a high pressure and a low pressure line, and then we also tested just a catastrophic failure in the valve itself. One thing I want to make quick note of, if you'll take a close look at the two ports here, the top one is a high pressure line going to a gauge, the bottom one is a low pressure line going to your second stage, either your primary or your alternate. And as you can clearly see, the bottom one has a much larger port to allow more air to come through. So when you see the results, you'll understand why on a free flow or a low pressure catastrophic failure, why air goes away much quicker than it does in a high pressure. So once again, high pressure, low pressure, and valve. On the 50 cubic foot, this is where we cut the high pressure hose. We had a bleed off rate of 56 minutes to bleed that tank off at 10 feet. Now, if we converted that to say a sac rate or a breathing rate for a diver, that'd be approximately 41.20 PSI a minute. That is extremely high, but that would be say the equivalent to a new diver. Maybe he's out of shape. Maybe he's been fighting a current or he's been doing some type of underwater work. So yes, it's high, but it's not too awfully high. That's a 0.68 cubic foot RMV rate. If we was to take that diver down to 50 feet or 2.51 atmospheres, or for the metric crowd, that'd be 15.24 meters, he would have approximately 29.4 minutes of air time remaining. Now, if that catastrophic failure happened at a depth of 50 feet, he would have almost 30 minutes time just to make it back to the surface. So yeah, it's a dangerous situation, but it still gives you plenty of time to make it back to the surface if you're alone or by yourself and you couldn't get to your buddy. Moving over to the 53 cubic foot tank, this is the one we cut the high pressure hose to simulate, say, a free flow situation. It only took three minutes at a depth of 10 feet to bleed off that tank. Now, if we converted that to, say, a breathing rate once again, that'd be a 769.23 PSI per minute sac rate. That is extremely high. His RMV would be almost 14 cubic foot a minute. It's exactly 13.58 cubic feet. Now, if we took that diver down to that 50 foot mark, he would only have a minute and a half uh, of time for him to survive on that air. Now, at a depth of 50 feet with an ascent rate of foot every two seconds, you would need approximately 100 seconds to make it to the surface. He would only have enough air to make it in a 90 second time frame. So I hope you see just why it's so important. And like I showed you on the hoses, the difference between the high pressure and low pressure port, that is why there is such a large time difference there. Moving over to the 63 cubic foot, this is where we did the valve mal uh, mal malfunction, such as say a blown O-ring. It took 13 minutes to bleed off the tank at a depth of 10 feet. If we converted that over to a sac rate for a diver, that'd be approximately 177.51 PSI a minute, or RMV of 3.72 cubic feet. And of course, if we took him down to 50 feet, he would have approximately 6.74 minutes of air time to make it to the surface. So that's still extremely high, but it's a little bit better than say, your low pressure hose uh, malfunctioning or ca having a catastrophic failure. So guys, there's the numbers. The low pressure is very, very scary. I hope you can understand just why it's so important to be able to deal with, say, a free flow underwater, and even more important to test your gear before you ever get in the water. And I would say even more important to make sure your gear is serviced on a regular basis, meaning whatever the manufacturer states, that's when you should get your gear serviced. If you want a little bit more information on how to clean your gear, how to properly stow your, store your gear or to adjust your gear, check out the SSI Equipment Techniques program. It's a great course to learn more in-depth techniques to take good care of your gear. Now, I will state it's not a technician level course, meaning you're not gonna learn how to rebuild stuff, but you will learn how to replace certain O-rings and to store it properly and to clean it properly and even to adjust certain things on it. It's a great class to check into. Guys, if you got any questions on this, please put it down in the comment section below. If you want to know how I did the calculations, just put it down in the uh, comments and I'll try to answer it the best I can. I want to give a huge shout out to Steve Nash. Steve, I really appreciate you sharing your story with us. We're definitely glad that you made it back safely from it. Um, and I appreciate you coming out and helping us out you know, with this test here. Uh, guys, if you like the video, simply hit that like button for me. Share it with all your diver buddies out there. Let them see this. That way they understand just 
how important it is to take good care of their gear and just how dangerous a catastrophic failure can be at depth. Guys, I really appreciate you watching the video. Check back each week for a new one. As always, make sure you follow us on Instagram and Twitter. Like us on Facebook. Pin us on Pinterest. Subscribe to us here on YouTube. And as always, guys, we appreciate your business. Guys, we really appreciate you watching our videos. If you liked it, make sure to give us a big thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, simply hit that subscriber button for us and make sure you hit the little bell to turn on all notifications. If you want to see some other cool videos, make sure to click these links here. They could be scuba tips, they could be diving videos, search and recovery videos, or gear reviews. Once again, guys, we really appreciate it.